There are a lot of options when it comes to at-home film developing tanks, but few are easier than the Azamago Labbox Daylight Processing Tank. Hi, I'm Dan, and today we're going to show you how to assemble, load, and process with a Labbox. Let's get started. The Labbox is a multi-format, modular, daylight loading film processing tank. That's quite the laundry list, so let's break that down one by one. The Labbox is capable of processing both 135 and 120 medium format film. It uses modules that connect to each other to form the complete tank. And last but not least, in addition to being able to process the film in daylight, the Labbox is the only modern processing tank on the market that can be loaded in daylight. So you won't have to worry about a dark room or a changing bag or any of that sort of stuff with this little guy. When you first open your Labbox, you'll need to assemble some of the components. But don't worry, if you can build a LEGO set, you can easily assemble a lab box. Just make sure you keep the printed instructions handy and be careful not to lose any of the small parts. The film guide allows for either your 135 or 120 film to be properly and evenly loaded onto your reel, ensuring that your film doesn't overlap onto itself and cause uneven developing. Inside of the packaging, you'll find the left and right hand sides, a mounting rod, and two rubber stoppers. To assemble it, grab one of the sides of the guide and slide it onto the mounting rod towards the center. Make sure that you follow the shape of the rod when sliding the guide through and that the text is facing up. Here, we'll be setting the guide for 135 film, so you'll see the 135 text near the end of the mounting rod. Do the same on the other side. Once both sides of your guide are on the mounting rod, line up the tabs on the underside of the guide and push them together until they lock. The last thing you'll need to do is place the two rubber wheels at each end of your mounting rod. To set the guide for 120 film, simply unlock the connection between the two sides underneath and spread the sides until they meet the rubber stoppers at the end of the mounting rod. Doing so will reveal the 120 text near the center of the rod. The next thing we'll have to assemble is the multi-format reel. The central hub allows you to mount the 135 or 120 reel sides depending on the film format you want to process. The 135 reel sides will lock into the innermost grooves of the hub and the 120 reels into the outermost grooves. Both the hub and the reel sides have left and right symbols on them that must be matched with each other. The arrows on the inner portion will also be lined up. Disassembly of the reel is as simple as reversing the previous steps to remove the reel sides from the hub. So you've assembled your reel, but before going any further, double check you've assembled it properly because an improperly assembled reel can lead to the film overlapping on itself and causing either uneven development or totally failed development and Nobody wants that. Hold the assembled reel in your hands and look at the central hub. Turn the reel slowly until you see the beginning of the tracks. If assembled correctly, the track should be aligned left to right, such as they start in the same place. This is what they should look like. And this is what it would look like if your reel was incorrectly assembled. Notice how the internal tracks of the reel don't match? Now that will cause the film to slip while in loading and overlap, thus leading to uneven or failed development. Now that all the smaller pieces are assembled, Let's put everything together. Insert the assembled film reel into the tank body and fasten the agitation knob by lining up the small circle on the agitation knob with the index on the main tank body. It should now be able to rotate freely. Next, insert the film guide into its designated slot and push it all the way down. Line up the tabs of the film module with the slots on the tank body and push the module down to lock it into place. Lastly, attach the lid by pushing it down until you hear and feel a solid click. Before you load and develop a Roll 135 film, you'll want to ensure that the 135 module is attached, the film guide is set to the 135 position, the reel is correctly set up with the 135 sides, and the spring-loaded blade is pushed all the way down. The blade's teeth should not be visible when viewed at an angle, otherwise you'll scratch the entire length of the film while loading. If your film has been fully rewound into the cassette, you'll need to use a film leader retriever. This is easy to do with the Azamago 35mm film retriever. And if you haven't used one before, don't worry, we made a video about it, so check it out to learn more. Cut the film leader square, making sure that you leave a nice straight line. Thread the film leader underneath the two metal pins of the 135 film module. Take the film clip and fasten it to the end of your film firmly. You'll hear a click when it's secured. Make sure the clip is as centered as possible and readjust it if necessary. Twist the agitation knob clockwise a few times to start leading your film down the film guide. So the beginning portion of the film was already exposed to light when you loaded your camera. So as long as you don't advance the film too far, you'll be fine. Replace the lid on the lab box to create a light tight seal. Then continue winding your film onto the reel. The knob will stop turning once you've reached the end of the roll. On the side of the 135 module is a gray button. 
push it up towards the lid. This will raise the blade and cut your film, freeing it from the cassette. Give the knob a few more turns until you can hear that the film has been completely loaded onto the reel. The knob should turn with very little resistance. Most photographic films are coated onto one of two bases, acetate or polyester. Polyester-based films are more difficult to cut and puncture than acetate-based films, so because of this, the folks at Arzumago have recommended against using polyester-based films with a lab box. A list of these film stocks can be found in the description below. Before you load and develop a roll of 120 film, you'll want to ensure that the 120 film module is attached and the film chamber knob on the 120 film module is set to the open triangle position. You'll also want to carefully tear or undo the adhesive sticker from your roll of 120 film. Be careful not to let the roll unspool itself prematurely. Open the grey tension bar and feed the beginning of the backing paper through the slit into the 120 film module. Place the lab box lid back onto the lab box and start pulling the backing paper through the opening. Doing this will load the film into the open film chamber. Continue pulling on the backing paper until it stops. You should see three arrows and the number one on the backing paper. Turn the dial on the 120 film module counterclockwise to the closed square symbol. This closes the film chamber, shielding it from light. Now you can tear off the backing paper and open the lid of the tank. Open the grey tension bar and remove the spool from the slot. The excess backing paper will still be taped onto the half inch of film that's sticking out of the closed film chamber. Carefully remove the tape without pulling on the film. Attach the metal clip securely to the center of the film and close the gray tension bar holder. Place the lab box lid back on and turn the dial back to the open triangle position to open the film chamber. You can now turn the agitation knob on the body of the tank to load the film onto the reel. You can stop when you don't feel any resistance of the knob as your film is now ready to process. Before processing with a lab box, ensure that your chemistry is up to the proper processing temperature. For processes like C41 or E6, which require higher temperatures, consider using a TCS-1000. We've got a video covering how to temper your chemistry with a TCS-1000 right here, or here, wherever they put the link. The lab box is able to process film using two different types of agitation, continuous or intermittent. Continuous agitation yields the most consistent developing and is more chemically efficient when using single shot or non-reusable chemistry as it requires only 300 mils of solution. Continuous agitation involves rotating the agitation knob clockwise during the entire process. Intermittent agitation is also possible by filling the tank fully to 490 mils. This involves rotating the agitation knob clockwise for 10 seconds every 30 seconds. Once you've decided which agitation method to use and your chemistry is at the right temperature, you're ready to process your film. Today, we'll be processing a roll of Cinestill Double X 35 millimeter with our DF96 monobath. The combination of a full daylight developing tank like this, the lab box, and a black and white monobath like the DF96 makes for a really great combo, as you can just load the tank and process your film in just a few minutes. Using a pitcher or graduated cylinder, pour the chemistry into the center of the sloped edge of the tank lid. Pour as quickly as possible without spilling in order to prevent uneven development. Once all the chemistry is in, start your timer and begin agitating. At the end of the processing time for the step you're on, Lift the tank and pour the chemistry out into the pitcher or graduated cylinder using the spout-shaped corner. With the DF96 monobath, that's it. We're finished processing. Once we're all done, remove and set aside the lid, agitation knob, and fill module. The first two will need to be washed under running water, but be careful not to get the fill module wet. To wash the film, place the tank under running water for at least five minutes. For an alternative that uses less water, fill the tank and turn the agitation knob constantly for about 30 seconds, then dump the water. Repeat this process about 10 times. After washing, remove your film from the reel and hang it to dry. Gently pull the film until you reach the metal lab box clip at the center. Undo the clip and hang it to dry, attaching a weight to the end of the roll to prevent the film from curling. After using the lab box, it's important to make sure that all parts are cleaned and left to air dry before assembling and processing your next roll of film. The lab box was designed to make loading and processing film in full daylight quick and easy. Coupled with our DF96 monobath solution, it's possible to process your favorite black and white film in minutes, basically anywhere. We hope this video helps cover some common questions about the lab box and shows you how you could possibly add this fantastic tank to your film processing toolbox. For any additional questions, feel free to reach out to us at support at sinistalfilm.com. And to check out the lab box, its accessories and special bundles, go to our shop at sinistalfilm.com. So we hope this video has been helpful. If you've liked it, hit that like button, subscribe, and leave a comment below if you can think of anything else you'd like to see us make. This has been Sinister Film, I'm Dan, have a good one.